I wanted to go ahead and introduce you to effects. There are a plethora of effects that you can use in Premiere and you can do all sorts of things from more realistic touch-ups to creating things that are a little bit more wild. So I'm just going to show you how to utilize the effects and we'll go through a handful of them. And because there's so many, we're not going to be able to explore them all. So you'll have to take a little bit of time on your own and go into the effects. Currently, I have a sequence that I've created and it just has a number of whale shark clips. In order to use effects, we need to open up the effect pane. We can do that by going to Window, Effects, and this is going to open up the effect panes. And as you can see, the effect panes are going to be organized inside of folders or bins. They are organized based on some of their settings. And earlier in the course, we have looked at presets. So these are things that you can make on your own and save them, or there are some preset presets that you can use as well. But we're going to be looking more at some of the video effects. There are audio effects and they work in a similar way. So once you learn how to use effects, it's just a matter of finding the correct effect. If we look into the video effects, you're going to see that there's many different categories of effects. So for instance, if I go into adjust, I can apply some basic sorts of adjustments. So if I wanted to do a levels effect, I would just drag this to my clip and then the effect has been applied. Now you'll notice that nothing really changes in the clip and that's because we've applied the clip, but we haven't altered any of the default settings. In order to control the effects, you're going to need to use your effect control panel, which is also located under window. When we open that up, you will see that in the effect panel, the new effect has been added and there are a bunch of like presets that we can use for levels. So you would just start to use some of these things. If I increased my black input, you can see how my clip is getting more dramatic and a little bit darker. And you could just go in and start utilizing these. All of the settings in the effects are keyframeable, so you could animate any of these effects over time, which allows you to create some really cool types of looks to your videos. If you ever want to reset effect, you would simply click the reset effect and that just resets everything back to the defaults. If you want to completely remove an effect from the list, you have to clear it. And in some cases, clear will not be present until you've made a modification. So if we just make a modification and simply right click and select clear, you'll see that the effect is now removed from this particular clip. It is worth mentioning that this clip has a time remapping already specified on it, which went ahead and adjusted the speed of the clip. That is something that we did earlier when we specified in and out points and had the clip stretch to fill the in and out points. We'll go ahead and we'll move on and look at some of these other effects. It is also worth mentioning that I did give you an example of levels. This is something that I actually like to use using a slightly different setting, which I'll talk about separately. Let's go ahead and let's look at some of these other effects. So I'm going to open the distort pane and I'm going to grab the mirror effect and I'll drag it to this first clip. Once again, you'll see no difference until you start making modifications. So now that the mirror effect is here, we can go ahead and adjust things like the reflection angle. So if we go ahead and increase the reflection angle and I'll set this to 90, you can see that I've created a mirror version of my whale shark clip and I have something kind of wonky looking where one whale shark is sitting right on top of the other. If we want to adjust the reflection center and pull this down a little bit, I can go ahead and pull the mirrored version down. So if I was to play my clip now, you can see that I have two whale sharks kind of swimming and, you know, appearing on top of each other, which in some situations could be something interesting for you to apply. You can layer effects as well. So let's go ahead and leave the mirror on there and then we'll add something else. Let's go ahead and let's go into the transition effects. And this has some transitions that you can use. 
So I'm going to pull on my gradient wipe and apply this to the clip and you'll see that this gets added and then we can go ahead and specify some of the settings so if I increase the transition complete you're gonna see that the whole thing is going to appear black and that's because this effect really needs to be keyframed so let's reset this we'll go ahead and move our playback head to the beginning of the clip I'm going to set keyframes for completion and then we'll go ahead and up this to let's just say 100 and then let's move out to maybe two seconds so I'm gonna type 200 and we'll go ahead and reduce this down to zero which in turn is going to create another keyframe if we play this clip you'll see that the whale shark is going to somewhat appear from this black area so it kind of creates a, its own custom gradient wipe if you will it is possible too because there are so many effects that if you know the name of the effect you can actually search for it right here so I want to use a color gradient effect and this is the one I want it's four color gradient so I just start to type color and it's gonna bring up all of the effects that have to do with color I'll grab this and drag it to my clip and as you can see this is going to add a four color gradient and if we look at the settings we can obviously set any of the colors we can choose how we want the colors to blend so if we want to make them more soft or less soft we can increase this value we can control the opacity and one of the things that I like to do when I'm adding something like this is to play with the blending modes so if you are familiar with blending modes from Photoshop you know that if you add blending modes it will affect how the overlying layer in Photoshop anyways is going to blend with the underlying layer so in a way our effect is almost like a different layer and you can see as I experiment around with different blending modes I get different sorts of results in my particular composition so I'm just gonna put this back to overlay and if we go ahead and play this the first thing that I want to point out is that there's a red bar right here this is an indication that this clip needs to be rendered before it will fully play so if I go ahead and hit my playback head it's gonna play but it might be a little stuttery because now it has a bunch of effects that are being applied and that could affect the playback if we want to go ahead and render this clip we would need to select the clip and then if we simply move the playback head to the beginning with the clip selected and click return or enter it's going to go ahead and render the clip out for us and depending on the number of effects and the length of your clip this could take a little bit of time so I'll go ahead and just speed through this and now as you can see the bar is green and the clip will play in real time the other way that you can render clips is to select the clip and come up here to sequence and you would just say render selection or if you wanted to render your entire sequence you could render to in and out which would allow you to render the entire sequence so a bunch of different options in regards to rendering the effects let's add one more effect to this so I can show you one other thing that is particular to effects so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to search for black and white and there is a effect where we can make a clip of black and white so I'm gonna apply this to the clip and as you would expect the entire clip is going to turn to grayscale now because this particular effect appears after all of the other effects they are all going to be affected but if I had applied this effect for instance before my four color gradient you will see that now the four color gradient is going to appear the effects are going to appear in the order in which you apply them so what that means is that when you go ahead and create multiple effects the order potentially could be very important and as you can see if I turn off this effect by clicking the FX icon this is what it looked like prior to the black and white effect but if we have that appearing before the four color gradient we get a completely different look so depending on the results that you want experimenting with the order of the effects can also be useful and finally as I just showed you 
if you want to temporarily disable an effect or turn it off, you can still leave it in the effect control dialog box and you would simply click the FX icon, which is gonna to toggle the effect off. Once you do that, the effect settings are going to be grayed out, indicating that that effect is no longer active, even though it is part of your sequence. So this hopefully gives you a little bit of an overview of some of the things you can do with effects. You can get super creative. There's a ton of effects in Premiere and it will really allow you to enhance your projects and allow you to add a bunch of different types of looks to your video elements. You are gonna have to just take some time and look through because there's so many that we just can't go over all of them. But now you know the process of using effects. You know that the effects can be animated by adding keyframes. And we really have quite a bit of options when we're adding effects to our clips in Premiere.